Hey, thanks for coming to the channel today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today I'd like to talk about the Furion tankless water heater. Maybe in the fall you had this tankless water heater and it worked flawlessly and you enjoyed it immensely. You winterized, you come back in the springtime, now you go to open up and you have a waterfall flowing beneath. Maybe you contacted your RV dealer or mobile RV tech to come, have them come out and take a look to see if they can repair this for you and you were told that the parts are no longer available and that you must order a new one. Well, well, I have two fixes for this Furion tankless water heater. Let's take a look. All right, the Furion tankless water heater. Fantastic option to have on any RV. However, it's not designed very well. It's not meant to be used in cold weather. Uh, if you look at the instructions, it says it operates normally at 34 degrees and use caution below 38 degrees. So let me explain to you really quick the backstory. My sister last, uh, last fall went out and purchased a new RV. Just like most people, her children are getting older, no longer want to come. She wants to get an RV that's more practical for her and her husband. And they found a layout that was suitable. They didn't get it to the end of the season. The RV dealer said they had winterized it. She never got an opportunity to sleep in it since it was now wintertime. It was parked on her seasonal site. We went to open it this spring, and the second we turned the water on, there was a waterfall flowing beneath this brand new RV. Needless to say, she has this Furion tankless water heater, which she never used. So, got to the back of the hot water heater and was able to see that the back end, not the inside of the unit, but at the rear of the unit, there's a T-flange. I'll show you a picture here with this softball size mixing bowl. So with this softball size mixing bowl at the rear, I have zero experience with this unit. Didn't know what to expect or never seen the back of one before. So we quickly turned the water on to try to see where the water was coming from at the back of the unit. It looked like it was coming from the T-flange. So we quickly turned the water off, dried it up, cleaned up the mess again, um, checked the fittings. The fittings all seemed to be tight. And actually the manufacturer had put red paint to show that it was at the proper specs. The red paint had not moved. So I felt fairly confident that it wasn't the T-fittings. So at that point in time, I took the T-fittings apart. Once I took those apart, I could see, well, just prior to me taking the T-fittings apart, the copper piping looked like they were bent down. So I took the fittings apart to, just in case there was some twisting inside the fittings and that they weren't sitting flush. And I wanted to take a look to see if that was the case to see if I could fix this easily. Well, once we took the fit, once I took the fitting apart, the bottom bracket or the bottom fitting of that mixing bowl fell completely out, fell right onto the floor. And once I looked inside the bottom of the mixing bowl, I could see that the bowl was split. So obviously water was left in the bowl. There was not enough antifreeze inside of there to prevent it from freezing. It froze, caused a rupture. So I took the mixing bowl out, figuring it should be an easy fix, called the RV dealer, say, hey, Let's just get this new bowl, we'll insert it, be good to go. Well, they told me they do not have it. He called me back later on that week. The parts manager at the RV dealer says he can't get it and that Furion's telling him that he must order a new uh, heating unit, the whole unit. So I reached out to Furion, spoke with someone there. I was told the same thing from Furion, that they do not have the part they're not making the part, have no intentions on making the part, and that they're having a new model coming out shortly, and that the only fix currently is to one, see if you can find it from some type of supplier that may still have one in stock, or to buy a new unit. So, we took the unit apart, I looked at it, and can show you the picture here, you can see that where the split is at the bottom of the ball, you can also see that the discharge leading out to the hot water line to feed the camper, that fitting also 
had a rupture on it. You can see that the weld there is also split. So my buddy Ray was with me. I told him what I got from an RV dealer. I told him what I got from Furion. He, at that same time, had been emailing with Furion. And the representative from Furion that he was emailing with said, hey, this is a common practice of these things fracturing and that there is a fix. You can bypass the ball. So, and the email also indicates that it will not hurt the unit. All right, so let me back up real quick. So once I'm told that we could bypass this mixing bowl, and I didn't fully understand what the bowl was used for, I went to Furion's website, I went to the owner's manual, and I did a little research to try to figure out what this bowl actually was. So again, this is my first time using one of these tankless water heaters. I am not an expert, and I'm just gonna give you my understanding or my interpretation of Furion's data that they have available on their website. So my understanding is that this ball takes the hot water that comes out from the hot water heater, mixes a little bit of cold water into this bowl so that the water is tempered, so they can control or reduce the ability of one scolding, two hot spots, and three cold spots. So that if someone reduces the pressure by turning on another faucet inside your RV while someone's say taking a shower and someone hits the outside kitchen turns the sink on it's going to reduce the flow rate going through the hot water heater which is then going to cause a hot spot. Conversely as soon as they turn that water off it's going to change the flow rate going through the burner the heating element and now it's going to cause a colder spot colder than the temperature you want it to be. So it's going to make whoever's in the shower very uncomfortable. So if they can eliminate this by mixing the water, they can maintain a consistent temperature regardless of the flow going through the elements. Sounds great. Sounds very practical. Very comfortable for you. However, the design of it is that bottom bracket is a pipe that goes all the way to the top of the inside of that ball. There is no low point drain, no ability to get all the water out of that ball when you go to winterize it. In Furion's documentation, they say it requires a liter of antifreeze to properly winterize this unit. I can understand that. If you can get a full, let's say get a liter into this ball, it'd be properly winterized. Problem I see is because this ball Discharge is also from the top or the high part of the side of this ball to your water heater system, to your water lines. How are you going to get all the antifreeze back out? You're not going to be able to just fill it and then naturally the water antifreeze is just going to flow out. It's going to stay. There's no consistency. I don't see a way of consistently or systematically removing that antifreeze quickly. So it's going to come out a little at a time, I would believe. I could be wrong but I don't see a way to get it out straight like you would through a regular line where you could push it out and it all comes out. I think that is also a flaw in this design. Okay, let's talk about the bypass and how we make that happen. So the T at the bottom of the ball, which I showed you in the picture here, is the water lines that come out from the back of the heating element and the cool water that they're using to make that adjustment. So it goes into that T fitting, shoots up into that ball, mixes around in the ball, comes out of the top, out to the hot water system. 
So what we're going to do with the bypass is where the ball attached to the top of the T-fitting, we're just going to take a piece of PVC with a half inch NPT uh, female nut. We're going to attach it onto there, take it over to the hot water inlet for the rest of the RV with the pressure relief valve already attached so we can maintain that safety element that is built into the system. So since this ball is not actually part of the heating of the water, it is just to make it a consistent temperature. We could now hook up directly to the hot water output of the back of the heating element go straight over to where the pressure relief valve so we want to maintain that safety valve and pump hot water directly into the heating or the hot line side of your rv but it's going to put back into play your hot spots scolding temp possibilities and your cold spots which is could be relatively easily fixed in your camper you could probably live with it it's just you have to tell everybody i'm getting in the shower don't touch the faucets well if you have kids they're not going to listen to that they're going to it's going to be an uncomfortable shower at times but most people can live with it so ray and i were sitting around talking about this process of how this ball is functions and we decided that we we could fix this ball by putting in a low point drain on here the ball's already ruined. It's destroyed. We can't get another one. My sister is under warranty, so she has to deal with them, which, of course, they're giving her a run around and no one's responding and everyone's pointing the finger at each other about getting this fixed. Meanwhile, Ray and I came up with an idea. If we take this ball that's already cracked, we're going to take it to a friend who happens to be a welder. He's going to fix it. He says that he can. Once he fixes the crack and puts the original equipment back into their proper positioning, he'll weld them back in. He will pressure test it, and he's going to put in a low point drain for us. So when we put the low point drain in, what I feel is you're going to put a quarter inch drain in so it doesn't take too much volume out of the ball. We're going to hook a line up to it, run it out to the water board make a new port and run it out there and put in a shutoff valve outside of the water board so that we could drain it outside of the RV without having to take the interior walls apart to get access to it. So if we do it by the water board, it's right where the winterization is all taking place. Everything will be in one place. We don't have to search for it, leave a tag, mark it, and it will be easily remembered so it does not get forgotten in future years when it's time to antifreeze the unit. Plus, with the line being a quarter inch, once we fill that line, that ball is not going to draw water back up from that line. It'll just use the water in the ball. At least that's in my theory. I could be wrong, but we won't know until we actually install it, which I hope to do shortly. Okay, after a long delay at, with the welder, we finally got the tank back. And today, I intend on installing it. So before we go to install it, I just want to show you what the tank looks like. So this is the side port where the hot water goes out to the camper. This is where the T-valve below feeds hot and cold and then it mixes inside of this container to go out of this port. The problem is, as you can see the size of this tank, and with this pipe up here, it won't drain from the bottom because it's only gonna drain a quarter inch before it, it's at the top of the pipe. So water's not gonna come out. As you can see how high this is, water isn't gonna come out from here either because this is too high as well. So the most you can get out of here is up to here. That's the most water you're gonna be able to get out of this to drain it before winterizing it. So what ended up happening was they couldn't get the water out. They couldn't get enough antifreeze in. You can't see how much antifreeze is in there. So this was completely popped off and this weld here was also broken. Luckily, none of this was broken here. So what we decided was, like I said earlier, 
we're going to put a valve or a place to low point drain this tank so that we won't have this issue again. So the closest we could get to this weld was here. And we couldn't put another half inch. We ended up just putting a quarter inch on here and I already attached it. Look um, at that would... Furion instant hot water heater or tankless water heater. Here's your temperature settings from outside here. You can also adjust it from the panel inside. Here's your on and off. And we take this panel off. There's where your drain is. And your over temperature, it's going to flow out through here as well, if it's over pressurized. So as we look at the side of this reflection grand design, you can see here's the water board. And this huge pass through front storage. Thank God it's huge. So we got to take this panel off here in order to make get access to the back. So that panel runs all the way across. There's no fold in it. So I have to take all the screws out and get it off. And let's get to that. Okay, now that we're inside and have the panel removed, Here's a better look at the hot water shutoff valve I put in, which we're gonna... There we go. And then here's the cold water shutoff valve I put in. I'm gonna turn that one off. And hopefully there's enough light there you can see. This is where the tank gets mounted, right here, underneath these screws. Here's the T-fitting. Can I see it? Yep, T-fitting. So what I did is I just made this bypass from this T-fitting directly into the pressure release valve, which then feeds straight out to the hot water line for the rest of the camper. So we're just going to remove this, this piece, insert the ball, reconnect this to the bottom of the tank, Put the tank back on here and this goes back onto the side of the tank for the discharge through here. Get ready to take it off. Even though I drained out the hot water line, I know there's still going to be some water left in the lines here. So I don't want to make a huge mess. So I'm preparing by putting some rags and paper towels underneath here before I take the joints apart. All right, I took the top joint off. There's not too much water coming out of there. The bottom one I already loosened. So let's just take that one off. And a little more water in there. All right, I'm gonna take these screws out of the top. So this sits like this on here. I mean, it's a tight space, but it could be worse. So. I'm not going to complain too much. Sorry about the dogs barking. My sister's not here. She left the dogs. And I couldn't wait any longer to get this video done. It's been sitting for a long time. So now I'm not putting this in tight, just getting the screws in. I'll tighten it up once I'm all finished. Cause I'm not exactly sure how everything's gonna lay out just yet.
Okay. Let's put some pipe tape on there. There is a rubber gasket inside of that nut, but it doesn't hurt to put a little pipe tape on there. Probably would have been smart to put the tape on before I put it under here, but no one ever accused me of being smart. Alright, see if we can get this to line back up because everything was bent. That's how much force that ice put on here. It bent all these pipes. <clears throat> now hopefully, we haven't had any leaks, so hopefully we won't have any leaks once we get this done. And of course I wrapped the tape the wrong way, but hopefully it will stay. a little snug that should be it pull this back a little bit this will hide away That's how that's going to go. Put some pipe tape on there. Okay, the little piece of tin on the back of the heater was hitting the back of the nut. I bent it out of the way and I will bend everything back into place once I have this tightened down. 
like I said, everything's kind of contorted because of the force from the ice. I'm just going to try to get it back to the best we can. Luckily, the hot water heater itself is not damaged at any point due to the ice. Just this ball that they no longer make and they said they're going to redesign it. And I don't think they need to redesign it. I just think they need to add what I put on. Yeah, add that on there, we're gonna be just fine. All right, got that bent back up into place. It's gonna hold this. Get this electric out of the way for a second. Put the overflow or overpressurization tube back on. I'll have to readjust it in the front because I pulled it in a little bit to give myself some room. Not snug. That should be it. And I'll tighten the screws on top. All right, hopefully it's tight enough here. We're not gonna have any leaks, but we'll check it once we're done. Let's see. It feels pretty tight. All right. Now, the one thing I did notice is that the barb, or the location of it is, is getting pretty close to that hot water line. It is slightly kinked there too. I hope I didn't kink it too much. We'll have to check it. Um, so let's slide this up and on. Now we're gonna run this. So ultimately, what I want to do now is to run that drain line from the low point of the tank. And I want to run it down so it gravity feeds down. I'm going to probably put a hole down very low on the back of the board here and run it through so that it comes out the front of the water board and it can drain through here when necessary. And the reason why I really want to put it on this board so it never gets forgotten. Uh, we contemplated putting it through the floor and let it hang like a low point drain for the rest of the camper. But I'm afraid because this is different and this is probably a one off on this camper. I don't know. Hopefully, if you guys have this hot water heater, you're going to do something like this to prevent yourself from having any freezing issues. But um, if somebody else would come to winterize this, we're going to label it here so that they know what it is and it doesn't get forgotten in the future. So let's get to that. All right, so before I drill, I'll take a quick brother look. There's nothing here. It's all clear on the back. Nothing to get in the way. Let's disconnect this quickly. Okay. So that's out of the way.
All right, well now we got that little tiny hole started. We'll widen this hole out to three eighths of an inch, maybe just a little bit more since the hose itself, the outside diameter of the hose is three eighths of an inch. So maybe we'll go just a little bit more. Maybe go to, let's see, let's get this out of the way. <laughs> Take a look. Yeah, I did a nice job. There's no burrs. It's pretty darn smooth. Hopefully this now will fit right through. Let's take a look. You want to be free and clear of anything in the back here. There we go. Can you see it? And I don't want any, I don't want any kinks in the back. I want it to run pretty straight. I don't want any low points in the back. Here we go. Okay, now that we have this through. We have a pretty nice length here. So if I need to, I can dump it outside or dump it through the hole to the drain port. All right, again, I was at that box store with the big blue sign. Everybody should be aware of that one. A hardware store, so they didn't have anything that I was really looking for. I was hoping for, I couldn't find what I was looking for. I was looking for something to push this out to a half inch PEX line to keep it consistent with all the rest of the PEX lines in the camper. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. I got this quarter inch interior, three eighths exterior diameter plastic hose. The nice thing about this is once antifreeze is in here, you're gonna know antifreeze is in here, you can be able to see it. So, I mean, that's a benefit there. Um, but the hard part was finding the pieces to match up. This quarter inch stuff is not very popular, not used very widely. So they didn't have a big supply of options here. So I ended up finding this inline shut off. It's a shark bite shut off with a joining coupler and then a quarter inch bar to go to the outside of this. So we're just going to connect that on here. It doesn't matter about the shark bite part. It doesn't because it's just going to discharge out of there. Okay, we push that water line all the way up. Yeah, I know this is a little big of a clamp, but I wanted this this width so I have more bite on here so to eliminate any possibility of leakage since there will always be pressure on here because the valve is so far away from the tank. There we go. Now all I gotta do is get a label maker and put a label on here saying what this line is for. Let's test it. Let's uh, turn the water back on and see what happens. Is that shooting out? Yeah. You can shut, shut that valve off. Got some of the toolbox. That's all right. All right. 
So that line's working. And let's turn the hot water back on. So the line is pressurized and I do not see any leaks. No leak here. Hey Alex, could you put that uh, hose back into this and then run the hot water? Not that, that one, the uh, blue one, the quick disconnect. If you just pop that in there and then turn the hot water on, we should hear the hot water heater kick on. All right, the power was turned off with hot water on the inside of the camper. So go ahead, Alex, turn it on to see if this thing fires up. Okay, ignite it. Let me know when you get hot water. I can smell it. Warm it up. We have hot water. All right, can you keep it running? Yeah. I just want to check this, uh, how hot it's getting on this it's plastic tube over here. It's at 120. All right, thanks, Alice. You can turn it off. All right, we have no hot water leaks whatsoever. Venting. And there we go. We have a low point drain. Let me shut it off. Thank you. Success.